Nintendo seems to try to turn all of their arcade games into gold, where Sega just sort of throws out the ones they don't like so much. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I show you some obscure Sega arcade games. Second Opinion Games Pig Newton, sort of a hilarious premise here. You have a pig climbing a tree, dropping apples on wolves that are trying to chop down said tree and then eat the pig. Of course, this is a high score game because it was 1985 and you're gonna die eventually. So it's kind of gruesome. Also, the pig sort of steals the bird eggs and other things tend to happen. This game is completely forgettable because... It's a high score game from the early 80s. Also, I decided in this video, I'm gonna go from 1985 all the way to about 1994. You know, the real heyday of Sega. 40 Warriors, a bland shoot 'em up that seems to be entirely in 2D. Of course, that four dimension comes from being able to jump over the backside and be on the other side of the screen. At best, I think that makes it 3D, not 4D, so I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Also, this is completely average, and you die pretty darn quick. And that's why I'm moving away from it as fast as I can. Flash Girl, normally I love every time you put the word flash and girl in a sentence next to each other, but this beat em up is a little bit boring. They do try to spice things up with some vehicle stages. However, they are kind of difficult because the tiny is hit and you are dead. The beat em up side is a lot easier and this game seems to be pretty good for its time, but forgettable. Action Fighter, Sega really sometimes just copied other games altogether, and this is definitely Spy Hunter, only without the great music and the great controls of that game. Heck, I died all the time in the arcade game with Spy Hunter, but this, this is just untenable because it's nearly impossible to actually play this. You can upgrade all your weapons, but the time you die, you lose them all immediately. I guess just like Spy Hunter. Legend. Okay, here's a weird one, but trust me, stick with this. You are a guy that can't fight at all. So you throw money bags at other soldiers and you can recruit up to three of them. Also, there's some bigger demons that you might want to throw some spears or some bombs at the kill. And the whole thing is being able to maneuver your characters back and forth and also know when to throw money at the characters and know when your guys are going to die. And this turns out to be one of the most fun retro arcade titles I think I ever played. They actually took the limitations of the systems of the time and used it in their favor to create something new and unique that no one else has tried. I really love this game. However, Sega seems to completely hate it, or maybe it's just not needed in this day and age that doesn't seem to have limitations at all. Bullet, a twin stick shooter with a girl in her underwear taking on a whole lot of monsters. You could pick up power-ups that last for a little bit of time and then they get downgraded. It's really easy not to get hit, at least for the first level, but then it starts to get really difficult with the boss battles. This is probably another one best in the trailer. Beirut, unless you couldn't tell, this is a Contra clone. It's also made by Sega and Sunsoft coming together to make the perfect Contra clone. Well, almost perfect because you can cycle through your weapons anytime you want. However, when you die, you revert back to the lame weapon and you really want the flamethrower pretty much at all times. So if you forget to switch your weapons, it's gonna get you killed. Also enemies, this is just trying to steal your quarters. Jumping to 1990 with AB Cops, oh my god, what a difference one year makes. Because the graphical upgrade here just blew my mind. This is a super scaler where you play as a cop trying to ram in the people and kill them. I, I guess this cop just really likes to kill things. And there's a whole lot of scenarios where things seem to happen. It's entirely time-based and it's also skill-based because even though you might have infinite quarters, you can't just pick up where you left off, which means you actually have to get good if you want to see the ending of this great game. G-Lock, 
This is definitely Afterburner before Afterburner was Afterburner, but a little bit slower, but I'm okay with that because I thought Afterburner was way too fast. Also, the music here seems to be really good. It doesn't really fit the whole jet flying around blowing up thing theme, but it is terrific to listen to. And this is one heck of a unique game, and I'm glad they managed to copy it for the future. They did sort of forget about its roots, though, because everything is just called an Afterburner clone now. Well, the next year, we got Strike Fighter, and this is essentially the exact same game, only this time they got the music to actually fit the theme, and also it's a little bit faster. Not quite Afterburner speed, but I could still deal with this one. They are both terrific games, and I really wish they would just go back to a simpler time where this type of thing was completely common. I just love these super scalar firing missile types of games in general, and this is definitely straight up. Rail Chase! They take the two things that I love about the most, guns and trains, and put them together in a game! Now you're not really in a train, for some reason you're in a self-propelled rail car, and you're being chased by some other things, and it just goes on for way too long. I mean, what's really powering this thing anyway? Also, I really love light gun games, but this is one of those ones that it's mounted to it, and you just sort of move it all around, and instead of just having the free range of just a hand pistol, I probably would have preferred that, but in the sense of what this game is, it's a freaking masterpiece. It manages to hold your attention every second of the game, and it's just unique in the way that it's played itself. You could have branching paths, and then you could pick up extra health, which seems to be fairly common, even though in most games of its sense, they're just quarter munchers and can't wait to kick you out and get the next kids to sit down and start eating more quarters. Ribbit! Well, Sega's gonna Sega, and what the heck? They're trying to copy Frogger here with the realistic looking frog as you jump over things to eat bugs and eventually you can die from water hazards or other bigger insects or just terrible things. This is just weird. I get it, it's sort of a puzzle game and it's very much Frogger, but it's Frogger from a whole new angle. Even though at first I really hate this game, it wasn't long before I completely fell in love with it. And it seems fitting because was Frogger one of the last games ever released for the Genesis? That's freaking weird. Stadium Cross, a dirt bike game that also seemed to have a reasonable port over to the Sega 32X that probably tamed its name for all eternity, which we're probably never going to see another one of these cross games made by Sega ever again. At least I hope not, because this sucked in the arcade, and it sucked at home. It was just a whole lot of suck all the time. Holoseum, this is a game that I gotta say was a product of its time. They were using holographic technology to have a one-on-one -on -one fighter. I understand the premise, however, in action, they completely dropped the ball and it really sucked. Other than the fact that it was really cool to watch, controlling your characters was sluggish, and because there was limited space on the screen, you couldn't get very far away, or you pretty much had to be up close and personal for all the fighting. On top of it, the special moves seemed to work at random and could never be reliably pulled off. This is cool if you can find it in your arcades, but as far as any other way to play it, don't even bother. Air Rescue is a 3D choplifter clone where you try to save soldiers and drop them off back at your home base. The problem with it is it doesn't work as well in 3D as it did in 2D, and the controls are just all over the place. Even if you got the controls perfect though, I doubt that this would really work because they have way too many things they're trying to blow you up as you're trying to pick up the people. I mean, just like in Choplifter in the first place. I'll take a pass on this one, even if I do think helicopters are awesome. Burning Rival, trying to compete with Street Fighter 2. Sega rolled out with this. It's a cartoony fighting game, one-on-one -on -one style, and uh, it's really not that good. Not much I can really say about it, other than the fact that it's completely generic. And even though I would like to see what they could do with it now, I'm completely fine if they don't do anything at all. Desert Breaker, that's right, because Desert Storm was going on. They have to throw the word desert in things just to make it relevant and cool to the kiddos. In this game where it should be a twin stick shooter, but no, it simply has the buttons and the one stick that lets you kill everything in the most awkward way possible to try and face your opponents before you cut them down to sides. It does have one unique thing up its sleeve. 
you could pick what type of area you want to target with an airstrike. So when you go into that, say you don't like tanks, for example, because fighting tanks is always terrible, well, then you could set it to blow up every time there's a massive tank boss battle on the screen. However, that might mean that you might have problems with helicopters then. Well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. In this game, even though I do enjoy it, uh, maybe just take a pass. Arabian Fight. This is a really cool idea. It is a beat-em-up where you mix in 2D cartoon elements in the whole mix, and this seems to work flawlessly. Also, there's some magic powers here when you unleash them. They are pretty darn epic. There's four different characters to choose from, even though I think picking the pretty girl seems to fit the best, because... If you get a chance to look at a pretty girl, why not look at the pretty girl? However, the bald guy here is pretty cool too, and this is simply one of the best beat-em-ups I think I ever played, at least for its time. Title fight. I know pretty much everyone's seen this in the arcade back in the time. There was these like two little things you put your hands on that sort of are like controllers slash boxing gloves, and you just try to beat up Ivan Drago the best you can. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you move on to fight another guy that decks the crap out of you in two seconds flat just to make you feed more quarters into the game. This is an interesting experiment. It's just, it should have stayed an experiment. Hard Dunk, one of the worst basketball games I've ever played, up there with Scottie Pippen on the Sega CD and Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam on the Atari Jaguar. Yeah, it is that bad, everyone, and it's made by Sega to be over-the-top basketball action that is completely pointless. Okay, one more title to go out with a bang, and it's a Japanese-only release, Zazukaya no Kayabui, and this is a shooter with very generic looking graphics. Let's face it, for 1994, this was very much below par. Also, what's weird about it is you seem to be shooting dancers for some strange reason. It's very much like Galaga, but if there was just, you know, like all of Lizzo's backup dancers attacking you at once, this is just freaking weird. Also, the boss battles are really crazy. You even have Homelander here trying to take you out. Oh my god, stay away from me, John Cena. And this game is just sort of nuts. I really didn't like it at first, but it really tended to grow on me, and I can't wait to get to the final boss of this game. Luckily, it's not skill-based at all. As long as you have enough quarters, you can definitely beat this game, and it stayed in Japan, probably because, well, look at it. It looks like trash. So Sega, why do you throw away titles that are just sitting there right for a rebooting? I mean, some of these, they should stay exactly hidden the way they are, but games like Arabian Fight or even freaking Ribbit, I can imagine a photorealistic frog now completely jumping around in a Frogger-like game being awesome in this day and age. So come on, let's make these games relevant again. And Sega, these don't have to be obscure arcade titles anymore. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it because I got a chance to play some of the Sega classic games from my youth. And I even found a couple that I didn't know about. So if you have a topic you want me to cover and you don't think anyone else would possibly do it, well, that's kind of what I do. So until later, I will see you again, guys.